Hey guys and girls, my name's Dan and welcome back to The Forge. In this episode of Trust Me, I'm a Blacksmith. Let's talk about hatred. So uh, I'm going to make this a three video series um, and I'm going to put them out uh, one this week, one next week and one the week after that. Um, and basically the idea is um, to discuss and talk about heat treatment and why it is we do it. So the three videos are going to be the chemistry which is this one, some experiments which will be the second one and the third one is where we uh, do some heat treating for practical, some real life heat treating on these hammers uh, which are taking forever like everything I do. <laughs> So what's the point of heat treatment? A good example of why heat treatment is necessary is to use a centre punch. Now centre punches uh, take full advantages of the qualities that are provided by steel after it's been heat treated. Now this particular object was probably forged to start with uh, and then heat treated. So the tip has been made hard, the uh, back of the, the centre punch has been made soft um, and the reason for that is we want this to be able to mark non-hardened steels and then we or, or other metals and we want this end to be able to be hit by the hammer without shattering and then we use a tempering process to make sure that this doesn't shatter but still stays hard and this body stays rigid when we're using it. As blacksmiths we take advantage of heat on a day-to-day -day basis and one of the things that's often not referred to when talking about the qualities that heating material gives, um, gives us as smiths is what happens when we're forging. When we heat up steel, we give energy to the molecules and the molecules then start to expand and vibrate and move about. And when they do, the bonds between them, the molecules, become weaker. We can take advantage of that. We can heat it with hammers and move the steel like clay. So there are four types of heat treatment that we use as blacksmiths. The first is annealing, the second is normalising, the third is hardening, and the fifth is tempering. Now there is a fifth, and that's surface hardening or uh, case hardening, but I'm not going to cover that in this video. Now after we've forged the metal and we've taken advantage of the fact that getting a hot allows us to manipulate uh, the molecules around and their bonds, uh, we've introduced some uh, structural flaws or stresses. This is sometimes referred to as giant grain growth. Now one way to get rid of that, or two ways to get rid of that, is the annealing or normalising process. Now annealing and normalising are essentially the same except when one is done in a medium which allows slower cooling than the other. So annealing is where you heat the bar up above its critical temperature. I'll refer to that in just a minute. Um, once you've taken it above its critical temperature, you allow it to cool down very, very slowly by using a medium, i.e. vermiculite, ash, sand, or in an oven. Normalising, on the other hand, is where you take your uh, your piece up to the critical, above the critical temperature once again and then allow it to cool down the atmospheric temperature. So what is the critical temperature? Critical temperature is when the steel is lifted to a temperature above 723 degrees Celsius or 1335 degrees Fahrenheit. Now when steel gets past this temperature there's an actual chemical change in the material. It goes from being perlite to austenite. When the crystal structure changes to austenite the properties of the steel also change. One such change is the fact that the steel is now non-magnetic. It also doesn't rust and it has an equality where it, whereby you can dissolve new materials in. We call it an alloying property. So we can take alloys of, uh, alloys of ferrous materials and add them to the bar. So when we harden steel, what's happening? Steel normally is found in its resting state as perlite. You can find it as ferrite and perlite or seminite and perlite. Its resting form refers to the point where it's below its critical temperature. As soon as you take the material above its critical temperature, it turns to austenite. Now, when it's austenite, I said that it has one quality that we're looking for, the fact that you can dissolve other materials into it, other elements into it. So it sucks up carbon. Now, we've got carbon in the material and we want to keep it there. And how do we go about that? Well, we use quenching. And this is how we can freeze the crystal structure as austenite. But when we do that, it, doesn't, it no longer stays austenite, it becomes martensite. So the quenching process using a medium, i.e. water, oil, uh, brine or molten salts, gives us the ability to take some of the qualities that we gained when the material was austenite and 
have those when it now becomes martensite. Now martensite is a crystal structure that is below critical temperature and gives us qualities of hardness. So the final process is tempering. Now tempering uh, takes advantage of a colour change that occurs when photons pass through an oxidised layer that is created on the outside of the tool, or the bar or whatever you're making. At low temperature, the steel stock changes yellow, which is 216 degrees Celsius, or 420 degrees Fahrenheit, and then that continues on up to 316 degrees Celsius, or 600 degrees Fahrenheit, where the bar would be light blue. Now this tempering process gives us some of the qualities that we desire to make a well-rounded tool, i.e. the centre punch. So guys, I really hope that video was informative and you got something out of it. Remember, this, this is going to be a three-part um, three part series. So um, the next bit's going to be the experiments and the last bit's going to be the hardening of the hammers. In the experiments, I'm going to take some O1 tool steel and I'll do a couple of control tests. To top this video up, if you are interested at all, I will post a link to a video that I found on YouTube that I think is absolutely stunning. Uh, the knife making in it isn't so good, but the overall output of the video, the content and the information is really, really good and there's some really nice graphics in there. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, it really does help. Um, I try and make videos as often as possible, but you know, this is sort of my business and I do some other work as well alongside, so sometimes it's hard to squeeze in everything, but I'm really trying to give you as much stuff as I can, as best quality as I can. Um, so if you want to get more, remember subscribe and ring that bell for notifications, it'll tell you when I make a video, uh, I think that's how it works. Anyway, uh, chuck your comments down below if you have any questions about this video or stuff that I've done before or things that you've been doing and it's not quite worked when you've been doing heat treatment. Uh, hopefully the next video will answer some of those problems, but hopefully I can answer them in the comments. Um, if there's loads of comments though guys, I might make a reaction video to the comments. Um, really enjoyed doing this uh, today. I've put, had to put a lot of effort in, a little bit of a script was written. I hope it wasn't too script, let me know. Um, so uh, I'm going to chuck a video up here um, of me making the hammers that I'm talking about hardening and I'll chuck another video down, random video, random special video. I don't know. I'll choose one. Um, so thanks guys. See you later. Goodbye. Everyone knows blacksmiths like nice hard rods, right? <laughs>